In this video I'm going to show you what it takes to do a heat load calculation and a survey for an air source heat pump. So behind me you can see a house, a 1920s construction, and I'm going to talk you through pretty much how it all goes together for your survey. So before we even get into the property there's a few things that you can see which really are going to help with our heat loss. The first thing you can see is that the windows um, up here are all double glazed and if I pan around a little bit you can see that pretty much every window in the house is double glazed as well. The next thing I'm really interested in is what's the floor going to be made of. And this can be really easily spotted if we uh, walk a little bit further up here. Usually underneath the, um, underneath the door you would see uh, an air brick but in this house a little bit strange um, but if you look over in the corner there uh, at the bottom of the picture this is an air brick which means that the floor is vented so underneath the house is open to the atmosphere and tells us the floor is going to not be made of concrete or dirt it's going to be made of wood this is something we're going to need to have a look at so the next thing we need to do is go inside and uh, take a look around now we're inside the property you can see the back of the door we were looking at a minute ago and you can also see the double glazed winds though. And if you notice that there's quite a big um, return in the wall here, um, it'd be interesting to know how thick this is. So if you get your tape measure and have a quick look, you can see here that it's something like eight and a half inches, plus the um, thickness of the frame tells me that that's a nine inch thick wall, um, which is highly likely to be um, cavity wall. Um, if we also look round at this wall, you can see the same sort of structure, again, sort of nine inches thick um, and double glazing. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to measure the length of the room from here all the way across to here. And also we need to measure the width of the room, not forgetting our um, bay window. So... You need to try and draw a floor plan as accurately as possible of how large the room is. And the other thing that's very interesting for us is we're interested in only really the walls that are outside. So if you look at um, this wall here, this is clearly going outside. So heat could potentially leave the room and go to outside. So we're interested in the distance from the end of the wall here all the way across to this corner and then all the way across here to this corner here. The next wall, this one here, is internal. You can see this goes into a, another room, so there will be no heat loss across this. So it's the external wall distance is very uh, interesting to us. So please make sure you've labeled that. While you're also in the room, we need to go and have a look at the radiators. So if you look here, you can see that this is what we call a double uh, panel double convector radiators. If you look very, very carefully inside, you can see that there's one skin of radiator here. There's a second one on the back here. Um, and inside you can see these little fins. They're called convectors. So this is what we call a double panel, double convector. I'm interested in knowing the depth of the radiator and the length of the radiator from one end to the other and also the height of the radiator. And while you're at it, just have a quick look down and look at the pipes. You can see the pipe coming into the radiator here. Um, it's worth taking a photo of this. The plumber will be interested to know what size this pipework is. This is 15 millimeter in this case. And you have to do that for each room. So measure your perimeter. Measure your floor area. Measure your radiators. Um, you'd need to measure your ceiling height. So from top to bottom. And importantly, you need to measure each of the windows. So, so we then move on to the next room and this is a bedroom. So you can see here, if we look at the walls, this wall here with the window in it is external. This wall here is an end wall of the house and is also external. And finally, this wall here is external as well. Finally, the end wall, this one, is internal so we're not really too worried about this so again you need to measure the length and the width the size of the windows it's worth a little check again with your tape measure to see just how deep the walls are and again we have a nine inch wall so cavity wall and notice the radiator again 
Um, this again is a double panel, double convector, length, width, and height, and a quick photo of the pipework, again, 15 millimeters in this case. Once you've got all that information, including the height of the room from top to bottom, um, stick that in a, a piece of paper and we can use that to do our heat loss. So the final part of the survey is we need to go up and have a look in here, in our loft. So we need to go and see what the insulation is like. You can't just take the homeowner's um, word for it. You actually do need to nip up, move your loft hatch out of the way. In our case, the loft is very cold, um, which tells us that it's all vented, but we can see here loft insulation. And again, getting our tape measure, what would be interesting is to see how deep it is. So here with the tape, if we look carefully at our loft insulation, we're actually looking at something of the order of a foot in depth. Um, it needs to be 200 millimeters at least. Ideally, you'd actually want to get up there and have a look, but in my case, I've just popped open the loft hatch to see. It's also very important when you're doing your survey to take a few photos. The first one is of the actual distribution board, the electrical distribution board, to check. And what the electrician is looking for here is to see if there's any space to wire the heat pump in. In our case, it's full, so um, there would be, need to be a little bit more electrical work done. Also, make sure you get a photo of this thing here. This is basically the incoming fuse. And what they're interested in is to see how the earthing is done. So just get a photo because the spark is going to want that. And also just panning over a little bit. What you need to do is make sure you get a really good photo of the front of the meter. Because there are numbers on here called the IBAN, I-B-A-N. And your sparky is going to need this for your application. So make sure you take photos of all of this or even better, a little bit of a video like this one. Last part of the video is to have a look and see where we could actually put the heat pump. So if we look here, sticking a unit somewhere along this decking wouldn't look great and you also probably don't want it in front of windows. Um, so if you look round the back, oh look, there's a heat pump already installed. Um, but this is an ideal place to actually put the unit. It's out the back, it's away from bedroom windows. So if we look up here, the bedroom's well away. Um, also, it's very important to check things like um, how it affects the neighbours. So if we pan around, the neighbours are clearly a long way away down here. And there's nothing but a school over the road, so this is nice. But also if we pan around the other way and have a look, you can see the next door neighbour's house is here. It's very, very important that we measure the distance from the unit. So you can see here, essentially from the middle of the unit, if you measure this distance with a piece of string all the way across, to the nearest openable window. So that's that window there of the neighbor's house. As a very rough rule, you want this to be something of the order of five, six meters, um, better further away, of course. I mean, this is to make sure that there's no question of noise and so on. If this was too close, of course, you could consider putting a heat pump down here somewhere in the garden, um, further away. In this case, it could go right away over here in the garden, but the further you go, the more expensive it is. So once you've found your ideal place and taken some photos, um, you can send all this information to us and we will do you a heat load.